Hello and welcome to o w o r m Today we'll be continuing our series on organs and take a look at the anatomy of the heart. The mammalian heart is a muscular organ which pumps blood through the blood vessels of the circulatory system. The pumped blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the body while carrying metabolic waste such as carbon dioxide to the lungs. Today we'll be dissecting a sheep heart which is very similar to the human heart. The heart dissection can be tricky because the heart is not perfectly symmetrical. But it is so very close that it's difficult to tell which side you're looking at dorsal, ventral, left, or right. Finding some key structures is crucial to being able to orient the heart correctly and figuring out which side you're looking at. However, you can see this large amount of fat that covers the upper part of the heart and blood vessels. It's usually a waste of time to remove this because you can just feel your way around when you're actually doing the dissection. However, I waste time all the time, and because you viewers can't hold this heart to feel around it, I'll try to remove as much fat as I can. Here's a really short footage of the fat removing process. There we go. Now we can start to orient the heart. The front or the ventral side of the heart can be identified by a few things. So, first, these flaps right here, called the auricles, covering the top of the atria. Also, notice this diagonal line. This is called the coronary artery, and the front side will have it running from top right to bottom left. So, make sure the front part of the heart is facing up and you just want to cut it straight down the middle. So, right away you can see the four chambers. Now, remember left and right will be switched because the heart's been flipped from how it would normally be sitting in your chest. So, this is the right atrium, which receives deoxygenated blood from the body to the vena cava. If I put my probe through it, you can see that it's connected to the vena cava that we're gonna see later. After the right atrium, the blood travels down here to the right ventricle. The right ventricle is going to pump deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary artery, which we'll see later. Now, the problem is, we need to stop the blood from backing up into the right atrium again. To do that, there's a valve called the tricuspid valve. Right here, this V shaped thing between the right atrium and the ventricle right here. You can also see that the tricuspid valve is attached to these strings. Which you can see right here. These are called chordae tendinae or heart strings, and they help pull the flaps of the valve closed. They're connected to these muscles in the ventricle, these bumps you see here, which are called the papillary muscles. So the papillary muscles would be the bumpy layer here. There's another valve between the right ventricle. And the pulmonary artery called the pulmonary valve, but you can't really see it from here. From the right ventricle, the blood enters the lungs where it is oxygenated. After that, blood re enters the heart through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium right here. We'll see the pulmonary vein in more detail later. The blood then enters the left ventricle right here, where it is pumped out to the rest of the body through the aorta, which is right here. The left side of the heart also has valves. This valve right here, between the left atrium and the left ventricle, is called the mitral or the bicuspid valve. Again, you can see the chordae tendinae and papillary muscles really well here. The chordae tendinae are actually so strong that I can suspend the entire heart on just one of them. There we go. See? So, here between the left ventricle and the aorta is a valve called the semilunar valve. You can see how when the blood is going in this direction, it flows fine, but when the blood tries to go in the opposite direction, it's going to fill up this pocket and close the valve, preventing backflow. You can't go the other way. You can see that the left ventricle here has a much thicker muscle wall than the right. The left ventricle needs to be more buff because it has to pump blood to the entire body, while the right ventricle only needs to pump blood to the lungs. All this dark reddish material here is made out of cardiac muscle cells, and it's called the myocardium. This very thin outer film like layer, which you can't really see, is called the epicardium. So now let's talk about the vessels connected to the heart. So I marked all of them in color the blue means deoxygenated blood, and the red means oxygenated blood. So, first we're going to talk about the vena cava, which is right here. And the oxygenated blood from the body enters into the vena cava, where it'll go into the right atrium. 
From the right atrium, it goes into the right ventricle, and from the right ventricle, it enters the pulmonary artery, which is this one. This is also still deoxygenated, that's why it's blue. From the pulmonary artery, the blood goes into the lungs, and after the lungs, it goes back into the heart through the pulmonary vein, right here. At this point, the blood is oxygenated from the lungs, and that's why it's red. From here, it enters the left atrium, then the left ventricle, and from there, the heart pumps out the oxygenated blood through the rest of the body through the aorta, right here, which is red because it's oxygenated. Aight, that's the end of the heart dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about the heart to send you on your way. The most common day of the year for heart attacks is Christmas Day. Scientists think that this is due to a combination of emotional stress and overindulgence during the holidays. So be careful next Christmas and watch out for a heart attack. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more.